Welcome to Rotary and Serving Our Community. My name is Wade Nemer, and today we are going to be taking a look at one of those projects that Rotary has cooperated with with a different organization and come up with a great way to benefit the community. With me today, I have Heather Frankel from Simi Sunrise. Heather, welcome. Thank you very much. And we have Devin Johnson from Weave. Heather, we'll start with you. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I think one of the most interesting and important things to me is that I have literally always been involved with community service of some type. My very first community service project was done when I was two and a half years old. <laughs> and what I learned from that is that you always ask why. Service begins with why. And that's really carried me forward into a lifetime of very meaningful work, both where I live and internationally where other people live. That's great. And how about you, Devin? So um, my background is in banking. I uh, was meeting with a friend and we had thought about opening up a business together. And so we ended up at Weave and we went through the loan process. And while we were sitting around the table, I kept thinking, ooh, I actually should be working here at Weave. This, <laughs> this combines my um, passion for financial education and, along with my banking experience. And then a year later I was working for Weave as their director of lending. That's great. <laughs> so um, tell us a little bit about Rotary and uh, your Rotary experience and how the two organizations ended up coming together. Okay, so um, as part of the service projects that I was doing, I became aware that if you ever needed any kind of help, you always went to Rotary. When I was board president for the Alzheimer's Association, if we needed help with board development, we went to Rotary. <laughs> if we needed manpower for fundraisers, we asked Rotary for help. And the same thing for funding, if we had an emergency funding project that was necessary. And so when I had the opportunity to join Rotary, I was in, <laughs> full up to my neck, over my head. I became involved with Weave because I had been working with microcredit lending. And when I wanted to do microcredit project here in our own community, everybody who I asked, who should I talk to, every single banker said, you need to contact Weave. Hmm. And that became a marriage. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And for you, um, how did that cooperation come together for you? Did you know that Rotary is going to be approaching you? or? Um, I think it was uh, a bit of a surprise that Rotary had approached us to begin with, but once Heather started laying out what Rotary had done in the past, what she was thinking about what we could do together here in our community, we were on board immediately. And it, we both brought um, like the two pieces together that made the project, I think, the success that it's today. it is. Perfect, well that's great. Now Heather, knowing a little bit of background on you, I know for a fact that the microcredit idea project came about from some work you had done in Honduras. So tell us a little bit about that. I mean, how was the connection there created? Well, um, I had started working with a group of other Rotarians in Honduras in a very, very poor village. It was called El Marial. And the people there were living on a dollar or two a day, and they lacked everything. They lacked healthcare, they lacked water, they lacked latrines, they lacked proper housing. And we talked with them, we said, what are your needs? And gradually began, began addressing what those needs were. After three years, my friend and I, Carmen, were used to going to the village, they were used to us coming. And we always expected when we came a long list of requests, a long list of projects. And one time we arrived and instead we were met with 20 minutes of very uncomfortable silence. Eventually an older man stood up and he said, we will tell you what we need, but this time we don't think Rotary can help. We need jobs. And Carmen and I looked at each other and we said to each other, microcredit lending. Huh. And we began talking with the villagers about doing small loans, especially to the women, so that they could start their own business, 
and repay the loan with interest, but at the same time be able to lift themselves and their families out of poverty. It was hugely successful. So that's how it all began. That's how it began. Now, with that part in Honduras, how did you end up starting the program here? In 2008, I was in Honduras and seeing the great effects of the microcredit lending. And of course, that's when our country was entering the Great Recession. There was high unemployment, people were losing their homes, there was food insufficiency. It sounds like Honduras, doesn't it? <laughs> and I said, well, if the microcredits work there, I wonder if they can work here in our own communities. So I contacted the Rotary Foundation and I said, gee, can you send me copies of all of the grants that have been written in the United States? And the answer was, no, we can't. There have been no other grants. And they said, I don't think you can do it because you need an organization that has a proven track record of being able to manage small microfinance loans. And we don't think you're going to be able to find it. And that led me on the search for Weave. Weave. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that is great. The grant itself, uh, we can probably go into some detail on it. The, the funding portion of it from the Rotary Foundation's uh, perspective, that was a $240,000 grant, correct? It a was. A competitive grant. It was. Now, the number 240000 was that a random number, or, or was that worked with uh, Weave on coming up with that amount? You know, when you're doing planning for any grant, it's always elastic. You say, this is what we think we need. How much do you think we can raise? And so there was a bit of give and take there. Um, but we knew that if we were going to be able to provide the services through Weave, we needed adequate funding for that part. And if we were going to do loans that weren't 100 or $200, but rather, $10,000 or more that we were going to need a sizable sum there. So uh, 240 seemed to be the approachable goal that we had. And uh, it was made a little bit of a challenge because half of that money had to come from outside the United States. Right. We had great, great cooperation from international communities in Asia. Australia, especially South Korea, are partners in this grant, Thailand, Central America, South America, two districts in Brazil, Canada, Mexico. Everybody really pitched in and they said, you've helped us when we had a problem and now we're going to pitch in and help you when you have a problem. That is great, outstanding story. The uh, portion, or that is the number of uh, grants themselves as far as dollar-wise, were you part of that selection also? When I say that, I think 25,000, 24,000 was the maximum amount? Um, <laughs> actually, Rotary had a cap of $10,000 when we got the grant approved. And what we found was that people here were needing more money than that. We were really limiting the number of people who we could serve and benefit. And so we went back to the foundation to say, can we increase the size of the loan to $25,000? Now, how did I get that number? Because Devin knows everything <laughs> about <laughs> loans. Weave knows everything about loans. Yeah. And would you believe that in the United States, a small business loan is still considered up to $50,000? Mm. So we felt 50000 was too large in comparison to the amount of money that we had to loan. But as soon as we got the larger loans, the program really began to take off. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Mm -hmm. I would say part of that had to do with the fact, and correct me if I'm wrong, I believe this is the first uh, microcredit grant of this size ever done in a developed country. Is that correct? And the other model had been created for developing countries. The other model had been um, created for developing countries and was based on group credit lending, people who knew each other very well, co-insuring each other's loans. And in developing countries, you can start a meaningful business with $100, pay it back 
in six months, take out a second loan, pay it back in three or four months. That's the pattern we saw in Honduras. Within a year, people were out of poverty. You can't do that in the United States. The loans have to be much, much bigger. And that meant that we also had a much longer time to be working with uh, the, the beneficiaries of the loans. And that ties back to a lot of the wonderful education and support that we gives. Understood. I would add that uh, this grant allowed us to relaunch our Spanish program and we have several graduation photos. Uh, we were able to hire uh, a wonderful woman, Leticia, and she is very grassroots out in the community and it does take a while to uh, get back into that community and build the trust and so we, uh, the grant allowed us to do that and also we're now uh, back in Santa Maria, and the training has been wonderful, and we're close to full classes. Now, um, I'm gonna jump in some pictures that you actually shared with us. Uh, you have copies right there. Tell us uh, some of the stories behind the pictures you sent us. For example, the first one there. So our first one here, very fun photo of um, one of our Ventura summer graduations. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the thing that these classes are a little bit smaller, a little bit more intimate, and especially around graduation, everyone has come together. You know, you hear, we do a, a graduation where clients will get up, they'll talk about their business, and uh, most of them are just saying, thank you so much for providing these resources. I didn't know where to go or where to get these resources in the past. And these graduations end up in a potluck. Everyone's bringing in food, and it's very community-oriented. You got it. Walk us through a little bit about the process. If somebody were to come in for a loan, something mm -hmm. like that, how would you start and do you screen them and then do they go through an educational component of that? We feel that having education tied with capital is extremely important. And if you only have one or the other, businesses have been less successful. We don't require that people go through our training. However, the training we offer is a 14 week, 56 hour, uh, program where people are writing their business plan and we're bringing in consultants so they're learning about all aspects of owning operating or growing their business uh, the consultants will come in talking about finance insurance um, taxes taxes thank you <laughs> <laughs> all kinds of, all, the, all the subjects yeah, exactly. and um, <laughs> yeah yeah well, with that it sounds like you've uh, covered it quite well as far as the educational component what is your success rate of that? Do you have an idea? Of the... The graduates that actually go through, complete that and start a business. We, uh, we do annual surveys. So yes, we do have that information. About 46 to 50% of clients who are pre-business go on to start a business. And uh, about 85% if they are in business are still in business when we are doing our uh, surveys which are about 18 months to two years out, which if you compare that to uh, our peers and our field, that's a, a very solid track record. I see in the pictures, um, we have a few pictures here. The next one also looks like another graduating class, Correct. I believe. in Santa Maria. Um, it's called uh, Weave or Women's Economic Venture, but I see that there's not all women in the picture. <laughs> We've, we focus on targeting women. Mm -hmm. Uh, we focus, our target includes low income, the Latino population. We also work with men. And we've just decided to keep women's economic ventures because really we are, uh, our goal is to help female entrepreneurs really grow and thrive. Okay. I know that was one of the concerns that Rotary had was that it was too exclusive, too specific mm -hmm. to women, even though um, a lot of the projects are focused on, on women. So I, I, I think that worked out well uh, that you had that. And I don't know if everybody is aware of that. Is uh, that they aren't. So it's, I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> Good. Um, next picture. Actually, um, we have a picture of a gentleman in a hard hat. So this is Michael Barrier. Okay. And Michael went through our training program in North County. He was a disabled veteran and he, it was around uh, 2008, was struggling to find employment and so he used the resources from um, 
through the through the veterans to uh, train and train in a new field. And he decided he wanted to own his own business and focused on green energy. So he went through Weave's training program. We started him off with a, a small startup loan and he then graduated to an expansion loan recently and that allowed him to hire a full-time person, also a veteran, and through the jobs program. Uh, also, he has another part-time person and business is thriving. <laughs> so the loan allowed him to buy a truck and equipment wow. and he said, you know, I, I wouldn't have been able to do that without this funding. Oh, that is outstanding. It looks like a great program and it looks like he's doing, doing quite well. Yeah. Looking pretty happy right there in the picture at least. Um, you have a the next picture we have is a picture of Scrubs on the Run. You want to tell Scrubs us on the Run, that? yes. <laughs> Reina Chavez, she came to Weave. Uh, Reina had been working, but she has uh, a son with some challenging issues. And so she was looking to have a little bit more flexibility around her schedule. She had started uh, this Scrubs on the Run, meaning she had Scrubs literally in the back of her vehicle. She would take them to different locations because it was very challenging for um, a lot of the workers to get to the store in time. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was very successful for her to the point where she opened up business on Main Street Ventura. And this latest loan that we have done for her, again with using uh, the funds from Rotary, has allowed her to, she's gonna incorporate her business. She now has funds to keep her, her shop full of inventory before sometimes it would have the orders would come in and then she'd place her order uh, and then again most exciting she has hired one and a half people and I think she's planning on opening another store. and she's looking oh, at another right? store <laughs> Good for her. Yeah. all right outstanding so that is Raina's That's shop Raina's, Raina's okay. on the far right and Marsha Bailey our CEO uh, they're next to her and then I believe it's two of Raina's employees and her mom so she kept the name Scrubs on the Run. Uh, she'll probably have multiple locations and vehicles around town <laughs> soon. Wait, one of yes. the interesting things that um, Devin shared with me through this annual survey that they go through, can you tell us about um, how much money is returned to the community because these businesses exist and they pay taxes and they employ people? It was a big number. It is a big number, and I Can't don't remember. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Sorry. So those are also Let's edit that out. <laughs> the other benefits, though. But the, uh, there are, really the other benefits about. are, uh, we found that for every um, dollar invested into the community, about we're getting a return of $12. That's mm -hmm. what I'm talking about. Oh, wow. That is that's, that's a great return on an, on an investment. Because we're looking at jobs, think? we're looking at yeah, taxes. Sure. Yeah. Right, right. Mm -hmm. The picture that we looked at last time has uh, Marsha Bailey in there. Do you want to tell us a little bit about Marsha? She couldn't make it today, but Marsha is our, <laughs> our CEO and founder. She's amazing. Uh, Marsha founded Weave, and it's been through her vision and her leadership that has grown Weave to Santa Barbara and Ventura counties. We have 17 employees now. Uh, you had asked earlier about the loan program, and we'd started it with more of the Grameen model, which was a peer lending model, and we'd found, like Heather said, that didn't work uh, as well here as it did in other countries. And so Marcia, again, led that to the point where we have our loan program now, and we have about a million and a half dollars that we are able to lend out to the community. Great, outstanding. Um, Seeing and, and working with Marsha, I noticed that she's always out front. She seems to be the leader of type, and she definitely is a hands-on type of leader. Mm -hmm. How was it working with her? Have you enjoyed that? Loved it. I would say all of us, uh, we are a great team. She's helped keep that um, culture going, but we thrive under Marsha's leadership. She's, can't say enough. <laughs> <laughs> Very Marcia, happy to be there. If you ask Marsha a question, the answer is always, I think we can do that. <laughs> <laughs> I can see and that. It, and it truly is a partnership. It's not, it's very collaborative. And she's very focused on um, all of this on a nationwide level, a national level. 
and uh, not just here in our communities, but really making sure that other communities are receiving the same. So WEAVE services. is uh, national? WEAVE isn't, okay. but Marcia is on the board of the National Association of Women's Business Centers. Next uh, picture we have here shows a picture, I believe it's a map of uh, Santa Barbara, Ventura? Or? This one is the city of Santa Barbara. Okay. And it's just, it's a fun map where it really at a glance gives you uh, a picture of the impact of all of the WEAVE clients that we're working with. And that's just in the city of Santa Barbara, wow. a snapshot. Outstanding. We also have a map like that for the city of Ventura. Which, yeah, there you go, the city of Ventura. Again, equally as impressive. These uh, indicators or marks, are those current ones that have been started, ones that you plan to start? These are all people who are in business. Okay. Uh, some are home-based and some are brick and mortar. That's the different color. Now, uh, with the program in itself and the grant that was uh, written, it was a competitive grant, I believe, correct? Yes. That had to be approved by the Board of Trustees at the Rotary Foundation. That's correct. Uh, so that was pretty stringent in itself. <laughs> the idea of doing $240,000, again, I believe it's the long largest uh, microcredit project that Rotary's uh, challenged with or has done in a developed country. That $240,000, that payment comes back then to the Rotary Foundation or does that stay with the, uh, the organization as seed money for a continuum? Actually, Rotary refers to it as a revolving loan fund. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so we have the body of money that's intended to be loaned out. And as those loans are made, people are also paying back their loans. And so in order to actually close this grant, we have to loan out all of the money, have okay. all of it repaid, and then loan it out completely again for the second time. Well, that's kind of a good deal so. there. <laughs> <laughs> We're on our second round of lending already. Oh, really? wow. uh, I think our challenge right now is we've lent it all out. We're waiting for repayment, so okay. we can continue okay. to lend it. Understood. Um, anticipated return on that would be year out, two years out, something like that. I'm just asking because as the audience see this, $240,000, that's going to eventually multiply up into the millions. Mm -hmm. It will. Mm -hmm. It yeah. will. And we have planned the grant to be open for five years. And if we can get some traction going on the paybacks, then loaning out the money is no longer a problem. We have people who are actively looking for money and, of course, Women's Economic Ventures has other funding sources. Rotary is but one sure. of many other sources. So it, they're making loans currently using other funding sources while we're rebuilding our capital. <laughs> the um, cash contributions, because the audience probably isn't aware of this, when you uh, start any type of Rotary, Rotary grant or project itself, you put a cash match to some available funds that have been matured through the Rotary Foundation. Do you remember offhand what the cash portion of that grant was that we started with? Round figured. Wow, I, you know, way that was so long ago, 2007. <laughs> I'm going to say that it was something around $25,000 in cash. Yeah, so that's what I recall too, between 25 and 28. Something yes, like something that. like that. Yeah, that's amazing, outstanding. That's gonna become a million dollars? That's going to become a million dollars. <laughs> and it's going to become Great. more because the Rotary Foundation, um, part of the grant approval was us signing up. I mean, it's actually a contract between right. my Rotary Club and the Rotary Foundation. And the provision is that when we close the grant, if my club and we want to continue using that money for loans, we can in perpetuity until one party or the other decides that it's no longer beneficial to all. Mm -hmm. And so we envision having this money circulating and recirculating for a very long time. Outstanding. Mm -hmm. Now we talked about the partnerships of uh, international districts outside of the United States as one of the requirements for this grant itself. Yes. Are you keeping them posted or are they familiar or aware of how the process is going, how the project's going? Well, since the project has been going for several, several years, uh, some of the people said thank you, but we have enough information and 
they're no longer following it. However, our formal partners uh, in South Korea, uh, they get all of the reports that we write. And we ask staff at the Rotary Foundation in South Korea to do the translation because I just finished filing <laughs> a progress report. The report was 100 pages long. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do believe <laughs> they're, that. They're technical. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks to Devin for her help no, in, in, that in doing true. that. <laughs> um, we also have people following us in Canada. We have people following us in Australia, in Mexico, in Honduras they have asked to be continued with the updates. And uh, because of the people who contributed and who were interested, one of the contributors was a neighboring district in California. And they are now interested in using our experience as a model and beginning a microcredit lending project oh, in their own area. Oh, outstanding. Some of the controversies surrounding global grants or grants that are done internationally is that most Rotarians don't realize it could reciprocate back, as in such is the case yes. this way. How do you get the word out? I mean, we have a few, uh, just a minute or so here to get that answer. Rotary is a network, and it's a network. It takes many people to make a successful project. We have many people in our district who have worked on successful projects in other countries, and we said, help! We need you now, and they came through. They came through, outstanding. Now, has um, this project been posted, printed for the uh, population of Rotarians in our district? Have they seen this? Absolutely. Good. Good. <laughs> We're constantly making presentations. Um, it's been featured at one of our uh, premier district events, which is called the Symposium to End Poverty Sustainably. Steps. Mm -hmm. Steps. <laughs> Steps. Yes. Well, with that, thank you very much. Uh, we kind of ran out of time. Fascinating, fascinating project you're doing. And again, thank you for partnering with Rotary. I think mm, it's going to be pleasure. an outstanding process. It's going to be something that, in my opinion, it's going to change the world, mm -hmm. having this available. And we don't see the benefits within the community from all of the things that happen from one little grant. So it's amazing. Again, thank you both very much. Heather, thank you for all the work thank you do for you. Rotary. <laughs> Devin, thank you for what you're doing out there in the community, building that. It's, it's been outstanding. Devin needs to be a Rotarian. She definitely does. <laughs> we're going to go off. We're going to have to work on her while the camera's still rolling. So thank you. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, stay tuned next time. Our next program will be equally in, is, uh, interesting. Take a look at WEAP, see what they're doing, along with Rotary and Rotarians in your district. Thank you very much.